So we're hearing breaches every day in the news. And people are getting so jaded about hearing about them, they don't even seem to care anymore. Yeah. But why, why are they happening? Why aren't companies doing a better job of keeping the data safe? This is, this is like the thing that frustrates me the most, right? Because you know, we see over and over that data is stolen. And, and, and oftentimes when you read the article, they'll say, oh, you know, there was an unsecured router somewhere or there was some software that was not patched. And that's the, that's, that is a first level cause of the problem. But, but to me, there's a root cause of the problem. And the root cause of the problem here is that they're not protecting the data. But doesn't everybody say that they're encrypting the data? Well, that, yeah, see, this is, this is what really galls me is that people say, oh, we encrypt all the private data and all of our customers' data. And what they mean 99% of the time is, is this thing called transparent encryption. Okay, it's, it's like this, this very low level encryption, which is useful for protecting the data only in certain scenarios, but almost never on a running server. So, so like that's what they're using, and, but what people are attacking are running servers that are on all the time. And so the, the protection that that transparent encryption gives is great if they walk into the data center and steal the hard drive and terrible if the server is already on. Wow. So. That really seems like the data is just in the clear most of the time then. It, it effectively is in the clear. Yeah, that encryption is on a running server. That encryption that is this sort of disk level or below the database level is not useful. So, th so the alternative to it is, you know, we, we call it and many people will call this application layer encryption. And what we're talking about is like when the encryption happens or where it happens. And, and so when you encrypt data before you send it to the data store, it's application layer encryption. And then someone who gets access to the data store, to the files or the database or whatever, they're seeing a bunch of garbled bits. So that when, like, if we think about almost any recent breach scenario where a whole bunch of data was just pulled out of a database, that instead would have been a non-event because the sensitive data would have been useless to the attacker. Hmm. So I've heard you talk about the Swiss cheese model. Is that what you're talking about now? That plays in. So the Swiss cheese model is, is a um, theory of risk analysis that, that comes out of the insurance industry where you, where you can think about it. So Swiss cheese model you can think about as coming out of like car safety, for example. In car safety, uh, there's all these features you can add to a car, a seat belt and an airbag and a crumple zone and a, you know, Lord knows what else they do, but they do a lot of things, right? And, and that's because an airbag isn't sufficient to protect the people in the car by itself, right? And, and a seatbelt isn't sufficient by itself. But you start adding these things together and the chance of someone dying in a car accident gets lower and lower and lower. And, and the, way they, the reason the Swiss cheese comes into play is because what they're really saying is that there's, there's layers of Swiss cheese and they each have holes in different spots. And in order, you know, someone is only gonna die if all of the layers fail, if, if, the, if the line goes through holes that line up perfectly all the way to the back. And if the line hits, hits the cheese instead of the hole anywhere along the lines, that person's life is saved because of that safety feature, because of that blind spot detection or whatever the heck the thing is, right? And so, the, so in risk analysis, you can think about things a lot in terms of layers and security the same way. So there's no perfect silver bullet. You know, if the data is encrypted on the server and there are applications that can read it, there are pathways to get to the, app, to the data still. But by protecting it such that someone who compromises the database or gets onto the network and gets access to it, it gets a bunch of garbage bits, it raises the bar significantly. It adds this layer of protection. And when you think about like what happened in the case of T-Mobile, for example, right? Mm -hmm. T-Mobile, they've been hacked how many times, five times or something in four years. Um, they're, you know, some kid gets into their network, finds the database and scrapes everything out of it. You know, it's, re it's ridiculous. It's like, so you could focus on the fact that they got into the network as the problem. It is one of the problems. You know, that's one layer of protection that was breached. But, but they didn't have the next layer of protection. Right. You know, where's the other layer, right? Where's, they're, they're significantly lacking in Swiss cheese. They're like a single layer of Swiss cheese, which, anyone, you know, which is like why teenagers are getting into their network. And, and so you know, if you want to add layers of, of Swiss cheese, you do things like encrypting the data and not transparently at the like disk level, right? 
meaningfully before it gets to the data store. And then, you know, it's a whole different world of protection for, for that data. And we don't have to get these notices and, oh, hey, we'll give you identity theft protection and it'll be fine. You know, I hate, I'm so tired of those. Right, we all are. Mm. Is there an easy way to tell if a company's doing something like application layer? I mean, from the outside, you don't know, but there are clues. Most companies have a page that talks about their security and the types of protections they offer mm. to people to try and reassure them. It might be in, in the context of their privacy pages or their security or, or, or you know, if you Google for it. And you know, most companies you go to will say something like, we protect your data by encrypting it at rest and in transit. And if they're saying that, they almost certainly mean these transparent mechanisms. If they say something like, you know, we offer customer managed keys or customer held encryption keys or something like that, they almost certainly use application layer encryption. Mm, okay. And usually when they do kind of, when they're doing better, they usually mention it in some way or other. Maybe they even have a page on encryption and how they approach it. Um, so if they don't, you should assume, if they, if they don't expressly tell you that they're encrypting it in some meaningful way, then you should bet that they don't unless maybe it's your credit card number where there's requirements to encrypt it right. better. So does it mess up the data when you do something like that? Why don't people put it in place more often? Yeah, good question. It's true. It, it, does make, it does make the pattern of how you need to access and do things with the data change. So it's, you know, the kind of the classic last 40 years of how we've interacted with databases mm -hmm. is, you know, the data, you know, the data is in, a readable form in the database and therefore we can ask the database for filtering and sorting and all this stuff for us and if you encrypt it so that the database is ignorant of what it's holding or the file system or whatever then you run into a problem where it might be harder or you might have to do something different to filter or sort or whatever mm -hmm. right you might have to load first and then sort or you use you know homomorphic uh, uh, encryption techniques or partially homomorphic encryption techniques. You do things like encrypted search where you're searching over encrypted data so you, or deterministic encryption so you can filter or and there's, there's all these tools available. We had, you know, our, our product line has a whole bunch of tools available for helping you to use the data after encrypting it so that this assumption that you can't use the data if you encrypt it is, is just, you know, antiquated and maybe lazy a mm -hmm. little bit because people People have a pattern of how they've been used to doing it for the last however many years, and that pattern doesn't work from a security point of view, but it's a comfortable and known pattern that people gravitate to. Wow, thanks. I think that's been really helpful. All right, yeah, thanks. It was a good conversation.